And hello and welcome to today's Bible reading and devotional time. This is for Saturday, May the 11th, 2024. Thank you for joining in and had a little bit of uh, Ray Walker leading congregational singing there. Uh, if you don't know the name, you've probably heard the voice. Uh, Ray Walker uh, is the last living member of the Jordanaires, which was one of the premier backup vocal groups uh, in Nashville and in Los Angeles, basically in the American music industry. Uh, they backed up uh, Elvis Presley, Tennessee Ernie Ford, Ricky Nelson, Charlie Rich. Uh, you can go down a whole list of people that uh, solo artists that they backed up. And if you look at on YouTube, you can find so like Ricky Nelson, some of his last concert tours before he was killed in that plane crash. Uh, and the Jordanaires are on stage backing him up. And they have all passed away except for Ray Walker. He's, uh, I think he's turning 90 this year. Uh, he's in his late 80s, I know that, and uh, he was their bass for many years, and he was a member of the, or is a, I should say, as far as I know, he's still with us. Uh, <laughs> he is a member of the Lord's Church, and he led a lot of singing in places. I got to meet him once at the Alabama Theater in Birmingham many years ago, and um, he led a congregational singing there of about a thousand people, I think, that had showed up for it. So anyway, hit that subscribe bar and then the notification bell when it comes up so you can be notified whenever content's added to the channel. Comment on these videos, like these videos, share these videos. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know that. The drill. So today we're continuing. Or wait, wait. I'm, I'm not doing this right. Hold on. Previously in John chapter 8. We looked at uh, the truth making you free, because remember, the Pharisees are still fussing with Jesus. They and everybody has to abide in the truth uh, by making it the rule of our life, by making Jesus the rule of our life. And ob obedience is the same as abiding in Christ and the Pharisees. They don't get that. And in fact, they are probably not even trying to get it. Uh, we also saw the last time that truth is knowable. That it is not an option. God expects us to learn and know the truth, and that is what is ultimately going to set us free. And then we looked at Abraham's seed versus uh, Satan's seed, and that's pretty much what we're going to be picking up with today. If the Pharisees and the other Jewish leaders were uh, truly of Abraham's offspring, they would have uh, his characteristics. Abraham, if he were alive, would seek out Jesus and would come to Jesus. And so Jesus is recognizing that the Jews... They can biologically claim to be uh, the descendants of Abraham, uh, but that's where it ends. They are not spiritually or morally the children of Abraham because they are seeking to kill Jesus. Okay, so that is kind of getting us up to speed. And so now we can go on with our reading in John chapter 8. And we are going to begin here in verse 39. They answered and said to him, Abraham is our father. Jesus said to them, If you are Abraham's children, you would do the works of Abraham. But now you seek to kill me, a man who has told you the truth, which I heard from God. Abraham did not do this. You do the deeds of your father. They said to him, We are not born of fornication. We have one father, God. Jesus said to them, If God were your father, you would love me, for I proceeded forth and came from God, nor have I come of myself, but he sent me. Why do you not understand my speech? Because you are not able to listen to my word. And you are not, or you are of your father the devil, and the desires of your father you want to do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and does not stand in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own resources, for he is a liar and the father of it. But because I tell the truth, you do not believe me. Which of you convicts me of sin? And if I tell the truth, why do you not believe me? He who is of God hears God's words. Therefore, you do not hear because you are not of God. Now look at John, uh, uh, look at verse 41 here. They said to him, we are not born of fornication. We have one father, God. Now, are they questioning Jesus' legitimacy? Some, like John Shelby Spong, think that, uh, the, well, they reject the virgin birth and think it was invented, uh, meaning Matthew and Luke lied about it, to cover up an illegitimate birth. Either Mary was promiscuous uh, or she was raped by a Roman soldier. It could be that they are. But look at the overall context. 
Jesus is trying like he did with Nicodemus and the woman at the well. He wants him to think spiritually. Plus, in chapter 6, verse 42, they acknowledge Jesus as the son of Joseph. And I believe it's Matthew records them as referring to Jesus as the carpenter's son. So, they seem to accept that Joseph is his father. Uh, but here the argument is not over biology as much as it is uh, d descent from Abraham. We descend from Abraham. We are the heirs of him. Yeah, well, if you were, you would be doing the works of Abraham, and you weren't. So, yes, biologically and genetically, sure, they descend from, a uh, from Abraham, but when you get down to the, the spiritual and the application of God's word, they're falling flat on their faces. They're not uh, uh, coming through with it. So it, it's so no, Jesus was not born illegitimately. He was born of Mary, and he was born uh, as a, uh, a virginal conception or birth, whichever way, whichever term you prefer. Uh, and that's how he came into the world. Now, exactly how it works, I don't know. But God made sure that it did work so that Jesus would have the divine uh, nature in him that he needed in order to be the, the payment for our sins. But now we have a couple of other things here to look at, such as in verse 40. Now you seek to kill me, a man who has told you the truth, which I heard from God. Abraham did not do this. Abraham didn't want to kill him. Now... Some have pointed to this while I was uh, putting this uh, time together, this this uh, talk together. I came across a few that uh, people who use this verse to show Jesus was just a man. Because he says, uh, you seek to kill me a man who uh, has told you the truth, which I heard from God. So they're saying, well, Jesus isn't God, Jesus isn't God. But notice something. Abraham did not do this. Well, if Jesus was a man born at the time of Mary, or you know, from Mary, and was a mere man, uh, what that makes no sense for him to say Abraham didn't try to kill him, unless Jesus was eternally existent, unless Jesus was one of those three that visited Abraham in Genesis chapter eighteen, where we read about the angel of the Lord. There's three visitors that go to Abraham. One of them is clearly addressed as Jehovah. And now we've, we're going to see Jesus claims deity here in, in, not today, but probably in our next session after this. So we're seeing some things where these guys, the Pharisees, differ from, from Abraham, number one, in seeking to kill Jesus. They have a murderous purpose in doing what they're doing. They're not interested in the truth. They're interested in keeping their power. And then uh, in rejecting the truth, as God revealed it, Abraham was distinguished for uh, love to man as well as love to God. Abraham did not reject what God uh, brought to him. Uh, he was one, too, who physically liberated captives, Genesis 14. He gave hospitality to strangers, Genesis 18, receives revelations from God uh, to him, and did so much more for the cause of the Lord than what these Pharisees are doing. Uh, and they're keeping the law, okay? They're, they're, in that sense, righteous according to man's standards, but it's God's standards where they're falling short. And Abraham uh, carried out God's standards. Abraham was not perfect. He lied a couple of times, especially about his relationship with Sarah. But Abraham, kind of like David, had the right heart, had the right attitude is a one way to look at it. Another thing we need to consider is verse 42. If God were your father, you would love me. Uh, Jesus was, remember, the brightness of the Father's glory and the express image of his person. Hebrews chapter 1 tells us, Everyone that loves him, uh, th that begat, loves him uh, that is begotten of him. 1 John 5 1. That's kind of uh, uh, confusing King, old King James English there. Okay, so from all this, verse 42, what are we getting out of that? Well, from that, we're going to see that those who truly love God love his son, Jesus Christ. If you say that uh, you love God, you have to love Jesus. Because remember, Jesus is how we get to God. And uh, th these men here uh, are pretending that they love God, but yet they're rejecting his son. See, they've got no evidence that they were ever the friends of God because they reject Jesus. You reject Jesus, you can't be a friend of God. That's all there is to it. And those who reject the Bible cannot be friends of God. If they love God, they would love him. 
uh, who came from him and who bears his image. So you can't say, yeah, you know, I love God. I'm a great Christian, but hey, I don't believe the Bible. That doesn't work. That is what we call an oxymoron. It's a self-contradicting statement. So uh, we see that these, these guys are not uh, the spiritual, intellectual children of Abraham. They're rejecting Christ, but if Abraham were standing there in the midst of them, Christ would be accepted. And then, yeah, here we go, like the ultimate insult, you are of your father the devil. You want to do the desires of your father. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth, because there is no truth in him. Just like it's impossible for God to lie, it makes me wonder, is it even possible for Satan to tell the truth? Now, if he does, he's going to tell just enough truth to make what he says sound good. So whenever he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own nature, for he is a liar and the father of lies. Remember, it just occurred to me when he quoted scripture to Jesus during the temptation. The scripture is truth, but what Satan was saying, his application of it was wrong. And so Jesus, of course, countered with Scripture and a proper application of it. But notice here in verse 44, as children, they do what their father did, you know, like father, like son. He was a murderer from the beginning. They're wanting to kill Jesus. Uh, there's no truth in Satan. There's no truth in these guys. Now, Satan might manipulate truth to make it a more powerful temptation. These guys use it to manipulate and control the people. And then these people, the Pharisees, are liars. Well, that's because Satan is a liar and they're following after him. So this is where you have to be discerning. Uh, the people in those days would follow the Pharisees. They were the clergy class, if you will. Uh, illiteracy was probably more prominent than it is now. And so they would just do whatever the Pharisees said. Or the Sadducees or whoever. But we today don't do that. Jesus said to go into all the world and preach the gospel, teaching them. So you teach by having a back and forth. You ask questions. You have discussion. That's the way you teach. And so, uh, as Christians, ask questions. Don't be afraid. In fact, I'm going to be doing a series here soon called The, uh, the Conversion of Some Religious People. And these were people who asked questions. And they got answers, and that's what we today need to continue to do, is ask questions. Don't be afraid of it. And if your church leader uh, is, is leading you astray, they're not preaching sound doctrine, then, and they won't listen to sound doctrine, then bail. Get out of there. So that's going to do it for today, for our devotional time together. So we'll... Uh, pray. Now remember, Sundays I don't post a uh, reading and devotional. Try to get my sermons out. I've been having some problems with audio lately. I think I've figured out what I need to do to lick that problem, so we'll try it again tomorrow and see if I can uh, get a sermon posted for you. So let's go to God in prayer now. And we thank you, Lord, for today, bringing us through another week. And today, Lord, we want to pray for our, those who are afflicted. We know there's a lot of poor people out there. We've just lost a bunch of jobs in this community. And we pray for those to be able to find employment, to continue supporting their families. And want to pray for those who are in prison and the sick, Lord, that they can find their way to Jesus. We want to pray for the widows and the single mothers and really pray for fathers to take our responsibility seriously, that we will... <clears throat> Be the leaders we need to be and the example for our children that we need to be. We pray for the church assemblies that are happening tomorrow, Lord. We pray for their attendance in some places. It may be Sunday already in the world and, and churches will be meeting soon. And we just pray for the truth to be proclaimed, for the hearers to apply the lessons. We pray for sinners to be convicted. And we pray for the righteous, Lord, to be encouraged. We pray that you will... Uh, help us, Lord, to see the need that people have for Jesus. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So that is it. Leave your comments in the comment section below. And then uh, send your questions, if you would like, or prayer requests to timothy4.2.3 at gmail.com. So that's going to wrap it up for today. Hope everybody has a great Saturday. And find a faithful congregation where you can worship tomorrow. Don't go to one of these denominations that's splitting and dividing and preaching all sorts of nonsense that's uh, non-biblical and or anti-biblical. Find a good, solid congregation. If you need help, let me know. I'll help you to do what I can to help you find one in your area. So that's it. See you in the next video. I'm done, and I am out.